who's yeah. just the most remarkable woman on the planet, essentially, as far as I'm concerned, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, um, and I get to do my radio show, and, and I've had a whole lot of experience in between, you know, been yeah. all around, and done different stuff that sort of gave me ideas mm -hmm. for who I want to talk to and why I want to talk to them, you know. Yeah. But essentially, it's basically what I'm doing. I mean, I really don't have much more of an agenda other than talking to the people who I love and who I think are doing great work. Sure, sure. And I mean, you, you it feels like you're following, you're following a, a, you know, a, a red line, so to speak, of, of the type of guests that you invite to your show. And I mean, what, what... That's an interesting choice of words, Henry. Yeah. Because, because uh, it, 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 it is a red line. And, it's a, and, and the reason I use that word, or that I recognize your use of it, is because uh, of indigenous people. And I have, I have uh, Lakota blood in my ancestry, mm -hmm, see? Mm -hmm. and so I do walk a red line or a red road, or I try to at least, mm -hmm. and um, and that stuff goes across borders, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter what a piece of paper says or what a, what a line that's drawn on, on, a, on a map somewhere, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's bigger than that, and it, and it goes beyond, beyond that stuff, so, sure, yeah. Uh, Some of the the big questions, I guess, or topics that uh, that you do cover. I mean, the, again, it feels like you're, you're following following that line al along. And I mean, tell us about some of these. And uh, or before we go there, t tell us kind of how how you or when uh, actually you you first kind of opened up your eyes to these kinds of topics. Because I mean, that's that's an interesting uh, you know process, I guess, the awakening, well, so to speak. <laughs> And all this shit, 
Right? Everyone's got their own gang. Right? Well, there's sure, a bunch of yeah. gangs that are out trying to exert certain levels of control. Yeah, yeah, but, absolutely. But, but, but who's really being successful? I mean, I think to, you know, to be a control freak in this day and age, all you're doing is bringing out a tremendous amount of aggravation onto yourself. Because you can't control me. Mm. And if you can't control the little things, you can't control the big things. You know, the butterfly effect is real. Hmm. Small little bitty perturbations, you know, in big gigantic dynamic systems can cause huge, unpredictable, improbable, and, you know, unexpected change. And this is what all these control freaks are, are, are frightened to death about. Yeah, sure. Change, sure, right? Sure, yeah. Well, so, so as a mathematician, right? Mm hmm. As a mathematician, I realize that, you know, chaos theory is a real thing and that, and that you know, dynamics and this sort of thing, that they're real mm -hmm. and that systems theory actually is real. And the, and the way social systems work is really no different than, than a chemical system works in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And so when you have, um, you know, the, the, uh, let's, let's talk about something for a minute, okay? Sure. About equilibrium. Scientific term, right? Mm -hmm. what, what's it mean? You know what it means. Sure. It means balance, essentially, right? Yep. Okay. Equality. Uh, things are working well. Uh, you know, harmony is another word that's associated with this stuff, right? Well, equilibrium, when a system, and I'm talking in the chemical sense, but, but, but by, uh, by analogy, all systems, right, including social systems, cultural systems, you know, galactic systems, whatever. Mm -hmm. Systems in general, they follow these rules. Well, when you have a system that's at, at equilibrium, it's very difficult to move it out of equilibrium. It takes a tremendous amount of effort, energy, in a, you know, in a particular vector, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it's, it's hard because it's strong, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, when you have a... And, and, and if you look at the at the opposite, right? You look at the the, the counterintuitive idea of disequilibrium, chaos, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you have in again, let's use the laboratory in the chemistry setup as the example. But in chemistry, if you have uh, a chaotic system, well, then anything goes. This is when 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 the laws of chaos theory and dynamics really you know shine and where the butterfly effect becomes something that nobody can ignore is that in a chaotic situation a very small amount of energy in 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 an, in any particular vector it's unpredictable mm -hmm. can bring about a brand new mm -hmm. and unexpected equilibrium and it doesn't mean it's going to be good, bad, or ugly. It just means that it can happen, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, that's the way I look at control. I think that anyone that talks about everyone having all this control, they don't. You know, I can still piss where I want. I can still talk my radio. I can still make love when I want. And you know what? They can listen in if they like. You know, i I got better things to do than worry about them. Mm -hmm, all I know is yeah. they can't touch me, sure. obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, because I'm here, and I'm doing my thing, and I'm unimpeded. In other words, my life, Henry, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As an individual, I do what I want. Sure. And, and, and trust me, I do some things and say some things that if all of this control was a real thing, well, I'd be in deep shit, my friend. Hmm. I should be in deep fucking shit, all right? Mm -hmm. But I ain't. And that's, so, you mm. know, people can make of that whatever, you know, whatever they want to make of it. Mm. I think it's the Occam's razor answer mm. is that, you know, is that that's right, because these people are really just chicken shit for the most part, mm. and, they're, and they've been depotentiated for the most part. And I, and I think it's sort of on the way out, not on the way in. Mm. So I'm sort of doing my own thing and trying to help people do their own thing and be creative and do art and, you know, grow things, 
you know? Mm. I, I, I see the dead animal, you know, laying in the pasture, you know, turning into shit and mushrooms growing off of it. <laughs> 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 you know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, this is my take. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's what we want. We want your take on this. <laughs> that's what, what, excellent. What, what else am I talking about? I mean, and, you know, and, and like I said, I mean, I don't know if 911 deserves too much more talk, but... Mm. To listen to Paul Laffley. I mean, this is a guy that I interviewed. Yeah, my sure. Friend. Yeah, let's he was, uh, you know, he was an architect mm, yeah. on the original design team. I mean, he lays it out plain and plain simple. Sure. There were charges that were built into the buildings. There was no news. This is no news fucking flash, Henrik. Anybody that was hanging around New York in the 60s knew this. Mm, That's yeah. the way they designed the buildings because, it, like, like Paul said, what brought down the, the World Trade Center towers... It was, an ex it was an act of extremism, but it was extremist capitalism that brought them down, hmm. right? Not hmm. extremist Islam or, 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 or Christianity or, or, or Judaism or any of this shit. Hmm. It, was, it was extremist capitalism that brought them down, hmm. right? There are extremist capitalists. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, we should bring that into the vernacular. <laughs> you know, there are people that will do anything for money. Sure. They'll just do anything for money. And, you know, it's funny. You, you, you know our friend Kent Stedman, who's so wonderful and who you and me sort of connected through? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, yeah. And he runs this great website, right, cyberspaceorbit.com. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. And it's an absolute inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's been around for a long, long time, longer than I have, shit, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, he's 65 years old. He's talked to everybody. He knows everybody, Henry. Mm -hmm. He knows everybody, right? They call him on the phone. He lives in a little. He lives in his little cave in Seattle. See what I'm saying? Nobody messes with him, <laughs> right? And he knows everybody, including you know the spookiest of the spooks, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So everybody's hip to the game. It's just that the, the, the people that you know, people out there in the public just decide if they want to capitulate or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, sure. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, for the most part, you can do what you want. I really do. I really do believe that. Yeah, indeed. And, and 9-11, I... hmm. you know, I mean, it was it was extremist capitalism that did it. And, hmm. and uh, Kent, you know, I'm sorry to lose my track a little bit, but Kent had said, you know, he's talked to so many people hmm. that say that you know, these robber baron types, you know, hmm. they, don't, they don't really even do it for, contr for control or power as much as they do it for fun. Hmm. This is what he says. He says they do it for fun. Okay. Hmm. That's, that's how you know, that's how disconnected they are with the with the whole business. I think. No. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, doesn't doesn't the the sense of uh, you know the lack from from their part then of control come into the picture there? Where you know I remember this you know really spaced out code <laughs> from actually the X Files, but they were talking to you. I think it was one of the men in black who who talked uh, that he was part. Um, no, it wasn't one from the Men in Black, but anyway, he was part of a group who actually were involved in in uh, trying to figure out where you know the future. But but the group they come up to the point where their their conclusion was the best way to predict the future is actually to make it happen or create it. Yeah, I mean we all know that our actions have some sort of uh, you know result, I and mean, we see it day to day. In other words, you, you, you eat you eat a hamburger and you're not hungry anymore. No meat. Right? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, or whatever, you know. Yeah. So we know that there are these things, but we, we we tend not to extend very far from ourselves. Yeah. You know, we tend to give away the power to you know outside of our own skin uh, to to other people, and somehow we, we allow the depotentiation of ourselves. And I think when you exert your own, you know, just your own will in a culture. You know, where you're not bound. I mean, literally. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can sort of do your own thing. You, it, which doesn't mean it doesn't take a tremendous amount of courage, and it's not hard, and people don't have their own misery, and mm -hmm. you know, and all this stuff. It's not easy. No, nobody said that it was supposed to be easy, right? No, exactly. Yeah, sure. But I mean, it's just as easy to be a jerk <laughs> as it is to try to be a decent person yeah, and try to yeah. tell the 